Hello, it is Throwback Thursday, June 1st, 2017, and as always, I start by sharing my Rhino of the Day, and this is a little bit uh, related to uh, something I'm going to share here on Throwback Thursday, and this is a children's book uh, with two fairy tales in it, two zany, zany fairy tales. Where is it? There it is. Uh, Rhino Rella and Rumple Catskin, and as you can imagine, the second half of the book, the Rumple Catskin, nothing to do with the Rhino, but Rhino Rella is a story you might never heard of a Rhino with an evil stepmom and stepsisters who the fairy godmother comes and she gets to go to the ball and dance with Prince Noceros and uh, has to get out by the stroke of midnight and loses her glass slipper, slipper and the next day the prince goes all over and finally puts the glass slipper onto the foot of Rhino Rella and they live happily ever after and so there you go so today for throwback thursday i am getting all kinds of uh, invitations and reminders and notices all about are you coming to your 35th college class of 1982 college reunion so crazy now when you uh, waste seven years in college like i did and go to way too much uh, schooling. Uh, I have three different anniversaries that seem to crop up. You know, there's a five-year anniversary of them practically all the time. There's a high school or a college or a law school graduation happening like every year or other year in my life. So there's a 30th and a 35th and a 25th and a, you know, it's all happening. So this year is the, you know, I found, I dug this up. I was looking for a bunch of stuff in boxes and wherever and look what I found. The incoming student handbook that I got handed to me on my first day on campus at Brandeis University in the September or August, the fall of 1970. I guess I'll wait till. Okay, I don't know if I was off. It appeared that I was off on the screen, but anyway, uh, they asked everyone to submit a photo to this new faces section in the back. Now, first of all, 1978, so you can see that today's, you know, Microsoft Word. I mean, every six-year-old kid can publish something looking much more professional than this on their home computer. But back then, you know, these those were the days. This is quote professionally done, and so uh, I'm all excited to share with you my. What would, was my high school yearbook photo, which I submitted as my incoming photo for the new faces section, and it goes alphabetically. Unfortunately, I, I don't remember at all doing this or why or whatever, but there's my name alphabetically. We get to Steve Cypress, so you can see the name there, and then uh, above it tells you what dorm room I'm in, I guess, in case people wanted to you know, get a hold of me or come see me or whatever. And look at that. It's torn out of the book because I do not think that somehow I was tearing out half of the two people on the back. I'm pretty sure that for some reason I was tearing my photo out of the book. No idea. Don't remember doing it. Here's the good news. I know that was my high school graduation photo, and I think I have a copy of it somewhere. And so in some future episode of Throwback Thursday, I will find that photo and share it with you. Uh, but one lesson to be learned from this class reunion, are you coming to reunion? We're celebrating the anniversary whole thing and get, send in your blurb and your life story and buy a copy of the, you know, 35th anniversary that I'm getting all these offers and whatever. Business lesson is a question I have for you, small business owner. Are you taking advantage of the uh, power of celebrating anniversaries with your clients, patients, students, members? Uh, I do it in my businesses. Are you celebrating in your newsletter, on your website, on your social media? Hey, so and so has been, you know, bringing their family to my dental practice. This is the five-year anniversary. This is their ten-year anniversary. This is a one-year anniversary. Heck, in my uh, Chicago and Sharpest Entrepreneurs Group, I gave one month anniversary gifts. Six month, one year, two years, three years, four years, five years, six years. They get to come up, spin the wheel, get prizes. Everyone celebrates them. I list them in the newsletter and on the website and 
and, and all over the place and, and recognize them in person at the meeting. And so you can do the same whether you have a come to you business, a retail a brick and mortar or location, or go to them, a service business where you're a, a plumber or a heating and air guy or a landscaper or whatever. You can do this in your business. Certainly, hopefully, you're not crazy enough to not mail out a printed newsletter every month to your clients, members, and this is exactly where you can celebrate that kind of stuff because I can tell you, people love it. I am not attending, and I never have attended a single reunion. I didn't even attend the graduation. Oh, I think I, yeah, I went to the graduation. I didn't go to my law school graduation, but I went to the graduation of the college. Uh, but I have not been back a minute since and never attended or, or think I will attend any of their reunions or get involved with anything or any of that nonsense. But, you know, I do appreciate getting the notice, hey, it's such and such anniversary, and, you know, we want to celebrate you, blah, blah, blah. So same with your clients, patients, members, customers. Even if they don't uh, want to come into the business and pick up a gift in their one-year anniversary month uh, to get their free meal or their free gift or their free whatever. Uh, I have a feeling when you notify them, they'll still have a good warm feeling that you thought about them and you thank them and you recognize them. So are you doing that enough in your business celebrating anniversaries? Second thing is, man, here's the second and final lesson for the day and then we'll end today's video is in the back here, we have the sponsors, and I'm sorry, but I'm not going to call them advertisers. I'm going to call them sponsors, because if you do this kind of thing, and you put your, basically your business card, Church's Fried Chicken, you know, address part-time jobs available, call for more information, that's kind of neat. So they're putting that in for us 18-year-old arriving college students. Hey, maybe you don't want the work-study job, or you couldn't get, you had to apply, you had to qualify. It was part of a... Um, uh, financial aid to get a work-study job like I always had multiples of but if you didn't qualify then maybe you were able to you could go a little off campus and get a job at a fast food place um, and so but these are not you know like, look at this one just a photo of CVS pharmacy like hey we exist so you know these are not what I call ads don't expect an ROI from these if you put one on the you know the, your local high school team has a poster with the schedule in the middle and then business cards basically all around and it, don't put that into your advertising budget say oh the kids came in and I invested fifty dollars into an ad in that high school program or yearbook or college yearbook in this case or into the you know the, the printout of the schedule for the swim team or whatever that doesn't go into an advertising budget that's not an investment don't expect an ROI that goes into your charity that is a donation that is a um, sponsorship don't expect an ROI if you get anything out of it that's fantastic great but that's 50 or 100 bucks that you give out of your giving fund that you help fund the local high school baseball team out of the goodness of your heart or whatever because that's what these are the so it's interesting to see that after 35 years plus four so this is incoming right 1978 this is so 39 years later and small business ads are for the most part as sucky and crappy and useless as they still are today. Now, this is not to say that some of these ads don't make money even when they're crappy. So if you're publishing a crappy ad like this and just put the name of your restaurant and the address and for orders to take out, here's the phone number and here are the hours, that's it. No reason to come in, no offer of first meal is free or get a dessert for free on your first visit, just show your students idea or anything like that at all to actually get people to come in even if you're putting cra crappy ads like this who's to say that hula hoop hula hula didn't make money from this didn't get some students to go in and like it and then come back hair cutters haven you know this isn't even a business card or whatever this is just they're just printing in courier font in the font that you type on a typewriter they're just putting in some plain font about a local hairdresser no free haircut in your first time in no reason to come in know how good we are, no testimonials, not anything, just the name of the place, the address, and the phone number, and the name Pat Gazzetti Cutting Specialist. And it says styling for the professional. For the professional. 18-year-old <laughs> incoming freshman kids, are you are targeting them as professional? Okay. Maybe you would say uh, for the soon-to-be, the up-and-coming, the future professionals. Anyway, not getting into a clinic on how to place an effective ad, just the fact that it's uh, interesting to see, and it goes way back to 1978, folks. Uh, there have been really bad ads placed by local businesses going back since the dawn of advertising. So the good news is you're paying attention to my videos. 
maybe my blog, maybe you're even reaching out and getting some help from me, and you are one of the few, the top 5% maybe of small business owners that are placing effective ads, doing some effective marketing for your business, congratulations, because the competition is as easy to beat as it has ever been. Those are bad ads from yesteryear, from 39 years ago. There are horrible ads in any Clip or Coupon or Yellow Page book or what local websites or Yelp or anything you can look up to find local businesses. If you put yourself in the place of the, the, the resident, the, the prospect for that local service or product, you would see, which hopefully sometimes you are. Hopefully not only do you sell stuff in your business, but you buy stuff once in a while. And you'll notice that almost nobody is ever really giving you a compelling reason why to do business with them. So it's as easy as ever to beat the competition. So those are the two lessons from today. Celebrate anniversaries of your customers, clients, patients, members, because they love that. And learn how to place effective ads so you can easily blow away the competition. That's it for Throwback Thursday, June 1st. 2017. Have a fantastic month. Always at the end, I look for any questions, comments. Troy Olds, good to see you here. I don't see any comments or questions, so we'll leave it at that, and I'll be back tomorrow with, uh, oh, Friday, with Foundation Friday. Well, I will share a basic tip and just an advance notice to those of you that are doing some effective advertising marketing that are beyond the basics of effective marketing. Fridays are a day off for you for my daily videos because I'm going to cover a very basic topic for the beginner who is really just getting your feet wet with all this kind of effective direct response advertising and marketing and sales stuff. So if that's you, I will see you tomorrow. Tune in for Foundation Friday. If not, I'll see you back here for Success Stories Saturday where I'll be interviewing a fantastic client of mine and one of the top printers, certainly the top printer in the country for direct response marketer, Mr. Joe Foley of Corporate Disc. It's going to be fantastic. I'll hope you I hope you join me Saturday. It's going to be... Um, 8 a.m. Saturday Pacific Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. You can ask Joe any questions you want. He'll be sharing all kinds of innovative and really cool things you can do to market your business. So I hope to see you there. If not, to see you tomorrow on Foundation Friday. Thanks for joining me today.